presenter. Um, as Swapper, we're going to hear from Amos Angelovici. Um, he, they've come to us from Colombia, so um, thanks for making the trek over, and we look forward to hearing all about Ad Swapper. I'll give the mic to you. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for waking up in the morning, coming to have and come having coffee with us. Uh, my name is Amos. I'm the founder of Ad Swapper, and uh, what I'd like to talk to you today is. Well, I guess most of you have heard the phrase, if I had a cent for every time I did something, right? So I want to talk to you this morning about, if I had a cent for every time I saw an ad. And why not? I mean, think about it for a second. Why wouldn't you get a cent for every time you saw an ad? Because if you look at the industry here, so it's actually a hundred and thirty-nine billion dollar industry in which brands are paying advertisers, are paying ad networks, are paying publishers, are not paying us, the consumers. And do I need this? Can everybody hear me? No. In the back? No. 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 Okay. So why use this? <laughs> uh, so nobody pays us, the consumers. Although, if you think about it. If we walk away, if we don't see ads, if we put ad blockers, for example, nobody makes money. So we're the only reason for this $139 billion industry. And there's quite a lot of us, so it's not like, hey, it's just me, if I walk away, nothing happens. There's over 224 million US smartphone users this year. And each one of us sees, on the average, over 100 ads a day. So why shouldn't we be partners? Why shouldn't we get some of that revenue? What? I'm not saying everything. I'm just saying why shouldn't we be a, a partner just like everyone else? And that's exactly what we're doing at AdSwapper. We're saying, hey, we want to empower users to become partners in this online advertising industry instead of just targets. We want us, the users, to share in that. And as partners, we'll share something in return. So how do we do that? We created a web app that, in very general terms, what it does is once you install it on your phone, you never have to interact with it again. You don't have to keep it open. You don't have to go to a special website. You don't have to use a special app. Okay, it runs out automatically in the background, and what it does is every time an ad is being sent to your phone, it catches that ad and makes really simple decision. Is that advertiser cooperating with you? Is, are they willing to give you a bit, a share of the revenue they're making off the ad? If they do, then the ad goes through. If not, then the ad gets swapped and that ad space is being filled by an advertiser who is willing to cooperate and compensate you for your ad space. Pretty simple, right? In any case, once you download the app, you get paid for every ad you're being shown. That's what we do. So here's an example of your user experience. As I said, once you download the app, you keep using your phone normally, okay? Just as usual as, as you did before. You go to your apps, let's say here's CNN, here's ESPN, here's a website, you go on a browser. But now every time you see an ad and you see our logo on the top left, that means you just got paid for that ad, for that ad space. Pretty simple. You don't have to do anything special. You keep using your apps to keep going to your website with the browsers you want. You don't change anything. We make sure you get paid. And you can follow how, uh, on our dashboard how many points you got, how many points you earned. And once you earn over 500 points, you can cash out. You can also earn from friends, but I'm going to talk about it in a minute. So how do you cash out? How do you get your money? Really simple. Choose any one of those e-gift cards, iTunes, Amazon, Starbucks, Chipotle, which is one of our favorites. Okay, um, PayPal, you can get it to your PayPal account, you can get it as an online visa. We, we 
really don't care. It's your money. Take it any way you want. We also give you another option or an additional option. If you, once you downloaded the app, if you send a referral link to your friends, we're going to give you 10% of what they're earning off their ads. So if you're making $5 a month, you send it to a friend, you're going to get half a dollar from them. In addition to your $5, send it to 100 friends, you're going to make $50 every month off the, your friend's ads on top of your five dollars. We've launched 11 months ago. So far we've, uh, um, we've actually crossed the two million ads swapped by now and we're growing at about now in the rate of over half a million ads per week that are being swapped and people are earning money for. And that's it. What do you want from you? If you're interested, Go to Make Ads Pay You, pretty much states our value proposition. So makeadspayyou.com, download the app, or better yet, follow us, follow AdSwapper, whether on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Tell your friends, okay? We'll be happy for them to join us. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Questions. This is sounding like it's going to be a talking stick and not an actual microphone. How do you make money from them? So we see ourselves as uh, the user's agents and we represent the users. So think about yourself like uh, you were LeBron James or Kim Kardashian. If I, if I was a brand and I wanted your, a piece of your time and attention, I'd like to sell you something, I'll have to go through your agent negotiate, write your time, and then pay you. So we're probably not going to be able to get you a million dollars, but as your users, we're negotiating every time somebody wants to show you an ad. And as your agents, we're getting a share of what you're getting. Um, what companies have, have bought into you so we're not working with companies, we're working with users. We're actually company agnostic. We don't care who's the company. We care who the user is. We're your agents, not theirs. We're, on, we're installed on your device. We're, think about us like an antivirus or a firewall. An antivirus company doesn't go to the virus creators and negotiates with them, right? They create a mechanism that protects your device. So we're doing the same thing. How, how do you get money from them? Oh, we have contracts with advertisers that, that's, that's that are willing to cooperate with you and pay, pay us to pay you, yes. What sort of contracts do you have at this point? Are there any big companies we know of? As advertisers? Yeah. yeah, there are some advertisers. If you'd like me to go to the list, I'll be happy to well, show you a list later. So this is a technical tax question. I mean, you're generating income for people. Are you generating 1099s for people? Oh well, according to as far as I know, to <laughs> uh, to IRS regulation, under $600 a year, you do not have to generate that. And uh, at least up till now, we haven't seen anyone on the rate of $600 a year. Our estimate would be somewhere between $60 to $150 a year. Users. Okay. And, uh, can I ask okay. And uh, I mean, how do companies, you know, like Google and Facebook, that make money through ads? You know, how, have you spoken with them? What are, I mean, I would think that they wouldn't like you dipping it, you know, dipping your beak in their in their water. So I'd like you to put it exactly like that, because what they're doing is they're basically saying, "Hey, it's our money. We don't want to share it." not with the user. What we're saying is, look, we represent the user. You're going to have to share some because it makes sense, right? Otherwise, we're putting an ad blocker and you're going out of business. And we think they should be in business and they should make money. It's good that Facebook and Google and other companies and publishers are making money. It's important. We're just saying up till now, the negotiation was single-sided. They pretty much set the terms, either you like it or not. 
It's the first time the user can come in and say, hey, wait a minute, we, now we have the power, we'd like to renegotiate this deal. So, and, and so have you spoken with them? I mean, no, of no. course, okay. we're not at that point yet. Okay. And, and how, course, do you, how do you anticipate, I mean, because quite frankly, I mean, the way Google and Facebook operate is they crush people, they don't work with them for the most part. So, I mean. I, I do not even presume to anticipate how they're going to react. If I was them, I would think that since they're making their money off their users, they would be open to listening to what the users are, are telling them. Okay, and eventually there are many models that it's actually in their benefit. Because right now they're losing, what, 20, 40 billion dollars a year off ad blockers, right? We're giving an option here, uh, an alternative for those guys. They're also unable to get cooperation from the user. They're pretty much invading your privacy and following you to get information about you, right? But here's what happens. If I get money, if you earn money for every ad you're being, you're being shown, it's in your best interest that the value of that ad would be as high as possible because you're going to get paid more. How do you do that? Best way is be more attractive to a brand because then they're willing to pay premium. How do you, how do you become more attractive to a brand? You tell them, look, I'm interested in your product. So let's say you're interested in travel or you're interested in sports. If you let us know you're interested in that or maybe you're interested in sports basketball, we're pretty sure there's a brand out there that is willing to pay premium to show you an ad rather than you being anonymous and everybody gets the minimal pay payment, right? So just by being inside, being a partner in this ad, revenue chain okay now you're willing to, it, again it's your your choice you can be completely anonymous and earn the minimal fee or you can say hey i'm interested in basketball get relevant ads and make more money but then also everybody else makes more money so in the long term it's it, it's benef it's beneficial for everyone hi so in my previous uh, life i was a, a mobile advertising network executive. So I may be part of the problem, sorry. <laughs> but um, a, a few questions. First, just technically how are you placing the ads? Uh, you talk about having a, a web app that the user visits, but are you actually buying ads pro programmatically? Or in, in what way are you um, applying to technology? So, to get really technical on how we do it, once you sign an NDA, I'd love to talk to you. But uh, in a general, we can work either direct buying directly from uh, ad agencies or work through RTDs or exchanges to, to buy those. It doesn't matter for us. Okay. And then if you, um, if you look at the, the value chain, uh, as you had up on one of your yep. slides there, in the scenario where your technology is used, Obviously, the user gets a piece of that. You get a piece of that as a user's agent. And then are you paying the publisher as well? Yes, if the publisher is willing to compensate the user, they get compensated too, yes. So you're, you've got to complete both sides of that network. You've got to have advertisers who are willing to buy into the system, and you've got to place uh, uh, specific publishers that are willing to have this. Uh, so we already have advertisers that are willing to do that. Uh, publishers, it's again, it's their choice. Also, advertisers, it's their choice. So they can either buy in, be willing to cooperate and partner with users, or not, and then others will. It's a free market. And the, the advertisers, I'm assuming, see you as as a, a publisher or a channel of the network. Um, yes. Are you providing any additional user targeting information that they wouldn't natively get from? So, uh, yeah, the answer is yes, but again, it depends on, since we're the user's agents, that's how we see ourselves, it depends on the user's choice. So you can decide to be anonymous, not give us any information, and you're going to get paid the minimal fee because the advertiser can't target you. Or, or can't target you better than they can target you right now, would be more exact. But uh, uh, you can choose to earn more money 
give us some information. Again, it's not private information. I don't care about your social security. I, I'm, I, I'm more interested in, for instance, what are brands interested in, your demographics, your areas of interest, right? What, what are you interested in, your hobbies? So if you can tell us, look, I'm interested in something, we'll show you ads that are relevant for you. You're not going to see those Viagra ads. You're going to see basketball ads or washing machine ads. And so you're going to get the information that is relevant, and you're going to get paid more because the ad would be better targeted. I just tried to install it, and it says I need Safari. Is this just for iPhone at this point? At this point, it's just for iPhone. We're working on an Android version that should be out in about three months. Um, so you're essentially providing a way to, to make my time valuable to consumers by enabling, or to Android by enabling um, you to restrict their access to me. Um, is there a way for them to, to, to technologically design around it? It's a good question. Um, not as far as we know. I'm assuming at a certain point they will try, just like they tried with ad blockers uh, or with any other. So it's for a while it's going to be a cat and mouse. But uh, uh, our technology is built in a way that their options are very, very limited. So how many users do you have at this point? Uh, we have 1,500 users. 1,500 users? Yes. Okay. So yes. I got to go back to what he's saying. By the time you really start growing, I mean, it sounds like Google and Facebook will crush you. I mean, how do you prevent that? Because it doesn't sound like, it sounds like you're, you, you're piggybacking off of it. And if you say a billboard ad, so you're putting an app on there saying that, hey, you user, if you're looking at this, you're going to make money. Only so far, you only have 1,500 users. So if you get it to 1.5 million users, mm -hmm. Google and Facebook are going to say, hey, wait, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? And? I mean... It's a little bit like saying, hey, uh, when Uber was small, nobody cared. But when they started growing, suddenly a cab, you know, cab driver said, hey, what's going on? Or Airbnb was small, but when they grew up, somebody started to care. Or um, Priceline, when it was small, nobody cared, but when they started to grow up or Hotels.com, suddenly hotels owners started to care. Yes, they will. Nobody likes when you take a piece of their pie. When you're disruptive to a market, that's what happens. The people that made the money or the big, the big boys don't like you. If they're smart, they'll understand that this is not, this is not something evil. This is just a renegotiation of the value chain and the revenue chain. This is the first time. Up till now, for 100 years, we've been educated that brands and advertisers can show us everything they want, and we have no say in the matter. And suddenly, your coming users have a tool that they're able to say, wait a minute, we'd like to renegotiate the deal. After all, you're showing it on my device. So I'd like to renegotiate it. Now, where the negotiation ends up, I don't know, it's a negotiation. But ignoring it, saying, no, we're going to crush it, is never helps. It's just going to pop up somewhere else. Somebody, eventually, it's going to be renegotiated. So at this point, you have a user who are making her to $150, $500 a month, a year. OK, so what's the incentive for me as a user to, to subscribe to this if I'm going to make 50 bucks a month? Well, if you're going to make 50 bucks a month, and first of all, you're not going to make 50 bucks a month. Well, you're, you're saying uh, 150 to 500. Uh, the question year. was about a year, and I said between 60 to 150, if I remember correctly. How much did you make in a year? Uh, 60 to 150 dollars. Now, if you're going to say, hey, I don't care about getting money basically for doing the things I'm doing right now anyway, then you're probably not my target audience. But that's what we're saying. We're giving you an app that basically earns you money for something you're doing anyway. If you don't want it, hey, you're not my target audience. 
But we're talking, our target audience is 18 to 24 year olds that do need the money and will appreciate the passive income. So just back to the Facebook or Google situation. Yes. You know, or just anybody. Is part of, part of your <laughs> value or part of your advantage is that you're ideally bringing me ads that I want, you know, that are more targeted in some way. So Facebook and the Google's the people that are placing the ads would want to be a part of this. So I, because they are getting in front of the right set of eyes. Is that way in at all? Or I'm just trying to get why Facebook would care. You know, like if it's already if it's adding a layer of drilling down into the demographic they're trying to reach. So there are several reasons for. Facebook and Google to care. Although actually our partners are probably not Facebook and Google, right. but the rest of the ad industry that is losing market to Google and Facebook. Right. But the reason eventually for advertisers to care is because we're adding them value with the information that the users are freely given, giving for the first time. Now, if you look, for instance, at what Apple is doing now with uh, their new iOS, they're limiting their cookie, their, the ability of advertiser to track uh, uh, users. So in a way, we're going to be a solution for those advertisers to be able to give that information. Because once we're, you install us on your phone, we, we're, in order to pay you, we know who you are, and you're giving us that information freely in order to get paid more. So we're giving a lot of options here. Okay, so uh, looking at your LinkedIn, we talked a little bit. I know you're a serial entrepreneur, and that means something in the uh, startup world. Uh, what keeps you up at night with this particular chart? Figuring out how to get the correct message to users, uh, getting out our message and educating users that this option actually exists is the hard part. So there's a lot of noise out there, a lot of apps, a lot of brands, a lot of ads, right? How do we get through that noise to tell you, hey, there's a solution here that can earn you money or a passive revenue stream for you, okay, convince you that it really happens and get you to download. Figuring out that magic is what keeps me up at night. And not Google and Facebook. Okay, um, no, I think I actually think it's a, a, a great idea. I think it's, you're coming at it from a really interesting angle. It's just, you know, it, it's, like I said, you know, you just have those big elephants in the room. I'm wondering because one thing you you know you said you know Kim Kardashian, LeBron James, they have agents and everything. Well, what happens if you are someone? I mean, I know you can refer people, but you know there are certain. I mean, is there another layer, another iteration you can make of this, where someone who is more influential, you know, if you have you know 10,000 Twitter followers, is you know, or you know, or something like that, are there different levels where you could, where the person could come back and negotiate and say, hey, you know what, I'm actually worth more than a penny an ad. I mean, this is maybe down the road, but I'm just kind of thinking a little expansively here. It, it's an interesting option, okay? We're, like any startup, you gotta start somewhere. But maybe I need to clarify something. Our goal is not to swap ads. Our goal is to make sure that you, the users, are getting compensated for the ads you see. So, down the road, we don't want to swap Google or Facebook or anyone ads. We just want to make sure that every time they show you an ad, somewhere on a, there's a ledger that says, hey, you just got to, you got to earn a cent. No, and make sure you can get paid for it. Because I know you're really concerned. Uh, I can see that. No, but my, my yeah. point is this. You, you, you missed the point of what I'm saying. My point is that, say, I, if I say something, I'm a big shot, okay? Yeah. Say I'm a big shot. I say an ad is worth it. It's worth more to the ad company to get to me than to get it to my neighbor who's sure. nobody. Yep. And so I'm saying that's maybe another iteration of this where you start to hone in on people and say, oh, this person actually, their opinion, getting the ad in front of them, to make because they might spread it out, is worth more than to the person who you know, sure, is a real clue. Sure, but loose. there's, so let's make a, a, there's 
let's differentiate between two markets. One is what you're suggesting is actually called the influencer market. Mm -hmm. And there are very good platforms and how do you reach an influencer to give him your message in order for him to distribute or her to distribute their message mm -hmm. okay, to their audience. The other one that we're looking at is how much are, am I worth to a brand to advertise to me? Mm -hmm. So obviously if I make a million dollars a year, I'm probably interested in more or more expensive, right, or luxury uh, uh, products. Mm -hmm. So I'll be targeted by uh, uh, luxury brands and they will be willing to pay me more for that. But now think about a video game company, they're not interested in me. For them, their target audience might be a college kid. And they're willing to pay extra for that college kid because it doesn't matter how much they're gonna pay me to watch their ad, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm, not, I'm just not interested. And that's what we're trying to say. We're trying to figure out a way to get users on board, become partners, and help us figure it out. We're just incentivizing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what, what would be my additional cost to my marketing budget? So if I'm a small company, and this is a way, like let's say you're, in, let's say you're the tip of a cultural iceberg, it's going to take shape. And so it's inevitable that I have to add you to my marketing budget. What's the cost that's going to, that I have to start putting in a year? It's going to be a percentage, like I have to add 25% to my marketing budget, or is it a, 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 a set figure, like 200 bucks a month? Um, like what, what, what is going to be some co-rated scale that you can pitch to small companies that that it'll help them understand about why they should eventually, why, they should, why we should all sign up. So, get, great question. The answer is, it's a negotiation. I don't know at this point. The reason I don't know is because I actually don't work with a brand. I work with, so you've seen the chain of the online advertising, okay? We're on way on the left on the publisher side the brand is somewhere behind the ad agency and the creative so what's everyone gonna get out of it how maybe the advertiser will say hey um the cost is on me because why because working with ad swapper enables me to better target the audience and therefore you as a brand are willing to pay premium for that so you shouldn't see the cost Right, because we increase the buy. Okay, now maybe you're willing to pay a cent to to show me an ad, and maybe to somebody else you're willing to pay I don't know half a cent or ten cents. It depends on their value, but that's exactly what we're saying. Look, each one of us has a different value to different brands. For some brands, we're worthless because we're never going to buy them. They should not advertise to us. Why? Right? Why are they wasting their money? For other brands, we should get premium because we're right there target in their target audience. So being, I'm unable to tell you beforehand, before I understand who's your target audience, how much you're willing to pay, how much they think they should get, can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is that just by increasing your target audience, better targeting, you're probably going to waste less money and get better conversion rate. I want to just give you one, uh, we always want to make sure we spend enough time talking about what the community can do to help, um, it's one of the goals of 1MC, so I know you talked about it a little bit and some of the ways we can engage with you, but is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Yes, uh, so first of all, feedback, feedback, feedback. It's important to us, every question you ask, then we go back, we chew on it, we see if, do we have the right solution or does anything else make sense? Second one is get the word out. That's exactly our barrier. We started eight weeks, or sorry, no, 11 weeks ago. Uh, we're swapping a lot of ads. We need to, we're already reaching 1,500 users, but we need to reach more and grow. Okay, uh, so spread the word. Um, that's, and we're going now on our uh, next, uh, next round of funding. And if you're interested or know somebody who's interested, we'd be happy to talk to them. Thank you. All right.